So the next feature I want to talk about is uh, Agent Autopilot. Um, so the primary, uh, I would say the business case behind Autopilot is to save uh, the agent's time so that they can focus their efforts on more complex conversations. Uh, but that what I mean is think of situations where agents are guiding or you know, kind of handholding end users through a series of steps that might be repetitive or not really complex. So a couple of examples are, one is you're trying, as an agent, you're trying to troubleshoot an issue uh, and you need to gather a bunch of information before you actually get to the, you know, the troubleshooting part. Like you might want to ask the end user for what kind of uh, browser version they're on, what kind of OS they're on, what kind of, uh, you know, hardware they're using, et cetera. The other example is you're trying to onboard the end user onto a product or a service and you might want to capture things like their name, contact information, uh, you know, and all that, which can you know take up like probably 10, 12 questions. So in that scenario, what uh, what is more useful for the agent is not to just um, you know walk them through those steps, but uh, they could essentially leverage the VA and make the virtual agent you know front that part of the conversation while they can either take a break or you know focus on something that's uh, more complex that needs their attention. So that's kind of the goal behind Agent Autopilot. So the business benefit here is it improves agent efficiency. And it also allows agents to multitask uh, while the VA is kind of, uh, you know, guiding the user through these, some of these steps. So this is uh, just a screenshot of how this works. So the way it works is, uh, you know, we have a custom quick action for autopilot. So the agent just uh, uses that quick action. And once they invoke that, they see what are all the autopilot topics that are available for them to use? And they pick the one that's uh, most relevant to the conversation with their end user, and then they invoke it. Once they invoke that topic, uh, basically the VA takes over at that point. And there are system messages to that effect, which I will show you in the demo. And uh, you know, the once the end user has kind of answered all the questions that are configured in the topic, the control passes back to the agent. Uh, that's kind of how it works end to end. <clears throat> Now, coming to use cases, there are two um, different variations of these use cases. <clears throat> so the one, like I told you, when uh, I mentioned the example of uh, you know gathering information before troubleshooting or onboarding, those would typically not require anything that the agent themselves would have to enter. So all, all they would need to do is just pick the appropriate VA topic, and then the VA just takes over from there. But there are some, think of some other use cases, uh, such as payment processing, for example, where uh, you, know, you might have a VA topic that is configured to capture payment information, but the agent would still need to include what the payment amount is, because that is not something that you would know beforehand. So that is an example of a use case where we, uh, what we refer to as something that requires agent input. So uh, another example along those lines is, you know, you're trying, the end user is trying to schedule an appointment, and you have a VA topic ready to go, but you might want to enter things like what day of the week you want the appointment to be, or you know what's the time slot or the duration of the appointment. So things like that, there are use, uh, variations of these use cases where the agent would need to enter something before they kick off the VA topic. So those are two things uh, to keep in mind when it comes to the you know, use cases for autopilot. <clears throat> uh, in terms of setup, so this slide talks about how the setup works end to end. So first of all, what you need is obviously you need a you know a relevant VA topic that can be invoked by the agent. And the way you do that is you go into VA designer as an admin or a topic author, and you create a, a specific topic. So it could be you could just call it a troubleshooting topic, and it might just uh, you know be a bunch of text boxes that ask the user for the contact information and whatnot. And once uh, that topic is set up, uh, you have a toggle within VA Designer like this one, which uh, once you switch it on, that's when it actually shows up for the agent to be used as part of the autopilot experience. Um, next, what you need to do is if you're configuring topics that require um, specific uh, parameters that need to be input by the agent, you would need to configure an appropriate quick action. So <clears throat> uh, one distinction I wanna make is if it's a topic that does not require agent input, then it's automatically bundled under the slash autopilot quick action. 
So the agent would, can just search using that command. Whereas if it's a topic that requires agent input, then it would not show under slash autopilot. It would just show up as its own quick action. Um, I, this will be more clear to you when I show you the demo. Um, so once, so that is the other step that you need to do. <clears throat> and uh, this is the last bullet is kind of what I already touched upon. So how we group it, uh, slash autopilot groups, all topics that do not require input and anything that requires input would show up as its own um, quick action. So let's uh, do a demo of this. Okay, so now we have a live interaction that's going on between Beth and uh, the end user. So let's just say for this, uh, for the sake of this, de this demo, that uh, the end user is trying to uh, register themselves for a conference. Uh, so this company that Beth is part of, you know, they host conferences, and the end user is saying. Um, for right. So what Beth does in that case, she just looks up uh, the command for autopilot. So once she clicks on this, it shows her the you know list of autopilot topics available. So right now we just have one that I configured for this demo. So it's one for conference registration. And once she invokes that, you will see a system message that uh, this topic has now been initiated and autopilot is actually now in progress. And you can also notice that the live chat between the agent and the end user has been disabled for the moment. If the agent wants to, they can actually kill the autopilot by clicking this button, but let's switch to the end user. So the BA is now taken over, which you can see by this system message here. Uh, and this is basically gathering all the information required um, for you know, for the purpose of onboarding this end user for the conference. So let's say, I'm just gonna go now. So one thing I wanna pause here is, you know, like you saw, there was a yes, no control, a Boolean control that was clickable for the end user, whereas it shows up as read only for the agent. So the agent cannot take any actions on the controls themselves. All they can see is a read only view of that. Uh, that basically tells them what the end user is doing or what actually they picked if there was a choice uh, like, like this one. So the same thing here, you know, this control is enabled for the end user, whereas it's grayed out. So now that's kind of it. That was what is required for this particular, you know, conference. So the topic ends and as you can see the Agent is now back in control. You don't see that system message anymore, which says that the VA is assisting. And on the agent side as well, you see that the topic is ended and live chat is now back on. So um, so the agent can start conversing. But that's kind of how the first uh, use case where autopilot without any agent input kind of works. So a similar thing, I'll just continue with the same uh, scenario. So let's just say Beth company, uh, Beth's company uh, offers more than one conference. Mm -hmm. Let's say they offer like four or five uh, around the same, same time frame that this end user is reaching out to Beth on. So in that scenario, what would happen is Beth would have to choose uh, which conference the end user is interested in uh, so that they can she can invoke the right topic. So again, let me say I want to, for the so Beth now has enough context that this end user now is looking specifically for the payment conference. So in that scenario, what she does is she looks up as a different quick action. So the one called a conference selector. And here is where she needs to provide her input. So there are three conferences that are, you know, for which topics are available. So you have one for small business owners, one for, one for payment professionals, one for content creators. And since the end user said they want the payment one, she's gonna click that. And the reason you might have, uh, you know, you have uh, different topics is, is that the registration process for each of these might be different, let's say. 
So now she invokes that. It's going from now from this point on. It's going to work just like what I showed you a few minutes back. So autopilot now is in progress, and this might be a slightly different enrollment form. So as you can see, there's slightly different questions. So it's asking if I need a hotel reservation. So I'm just gonna say yes. So now that, that kind of ends that topic. Um, you know, so the user is now registered for the payments conference. And again, as you can see, live chat is back uh, between Beth and the end user, and the VA toggle or the VA system message is now off. So And that uh, kind of sums up how autopilot works end to end.